new proclamations. What wise men, great men, medical men, professional people have not been able to do, God will do it. All those things that are forgotten, your forgotten strength, your forgotten power, your forgotten revelation, everything you said, I had a dream long ago. And I thought, this is what I will do. I've forgotten now, your forgotten vision will come up again. Passion will come up again. Revelation will come up again. New life will come up again in your life in Jesus' name. Only Christ Jesus has the power of this new year. An unforgettable encounter beckons. We are connecting to the God of wonders this new year for salvation and deliverance. Welcome GCK to Asaba. Delta State, Nigeria, January 26th to 31st, 2023. 1600 hours GMT daily and Global Sunday Worship at or 700 hours GMT. Also featuring ministers and professionals conference with Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Young Professionals. It's a new year of wonders this 2023. From the Niger Delta, the oil of anointing will be transported by satellite and all our social media links to over 150 countries of the world. Join the team in GCK audience as the man appointed by God, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Komoi, connects the world to an unforgettable encounter with the God of Wonders. Glorious music ministrations by choirs from nations across the world with guest music ministration by Jonathan Lee. Darkness gone. Yeah. Premature death cancelled. Yeah. Yours is now to reap the benefit. GCK, the, the gospel, gospel to every creature. Almighty God will bless your name for bringing us together in this Bible study tonight. We have come to you. And we know that whenever we come, you have some things to teach us. You have the bread of life to give us. And Father, we pray that as we're here tonight, none of us will go away empty-handed in Jesus' name. That you'll feed us with this bread of life. Show us the path of life, of light, of righteousness. And give us the strength to walk uprightly in the way of the Lord in Jesus' name. We pray that you grant us wisdom from above. The wisdom to understand. The wisdom to apply. And the wisdom to follow through. So that we'll live lives that will show that we have been with the Lord Jesus Christ. And show us to make use of the best opportunities we have that we will redeem the time and profitably spend a life here on earth that when we come to see you face to face, we'll be happy for the way we spent our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. We are grateful to the Lord who has brought us together tonight in this combined Bible study. It's a wonderful thing to have the privilege to study the Bible together. And I pray that as we're here tonight studying the Word, that the Spirit of God himself will enlighten us and will help us to have proper understanding of the word in Jesus' name. And we'll be so touched by the Spirit of God that places we go, they will see the mark, the evidence, the influence of the study of the word of God in our lives in Jesus' name. Tonight we have an important study in the series that we have been following. If you have been attending our Bible studies in the districts, you will know that we have been consistently studying from the epistle to the Colossians. And right now we are in chapter 4. Tonight we are looking at just one verse of scripture. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. If you are new with us in our Bible study, 
it may surprise you that we're going to spend the whole evening on one verse of scripture. But we have discovered in Bible study that because our God is great, his word is deep and profound. And it is not always easy and possible to go over so many passages without staying at a particular spot to dig out the great, the high, the deep things that the Lord has reserved for us in a single verse of scripture. And what we're going to do tonight is that we're going to take just this verse and we're going to see what the Spirit of the Lord is having for us at this hour. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. The emphasis of the verse is the word that starts the verse, walk. That word walk is a word of action. It is giving us a commandment and it is telling us to do something. Now we are all familiar with walking in the natural. When you walk in the natural, you have a decision in your mind that you want to live where you are and you want to go to a particular destination. Getting to that particular destination will get you into walking. That means you'll be taking some step. One step, another step, another step, you're walking. But then before you take all those steps, you would have calculated. You would have looked at all the facts that you have. Then in wisdom, you will take a decision. Maybe you want to take the best road, the safest road, the quickest road. That will depend on your wisdom. As you are considering that you are going to walk, and you are applying your wisdom, you are gauging the time. How much time will it take me as I walk there? Three things. You are walking. Number one. Number two, you are applying wisdom. Number three, you are calculating the time, evaluating the time, seeing how to spend the time in going from here to there. The Christian life is like that. You are leaving this earthly destination, earthly place of pilgrimage, place of abode. You are going to the heavenly destination. You are moving from here to there. How do you get there? You walk. How do you walk? You take some steps. As you take those steps, no human being is wise enough to be able to go from earth to heaven because none of us had been there before. We do not know the way. And a man will be foolish if he doesn't know the way and he doesn't ask. We need the wisdom of God to go from here to there. We are walking. But then we're not just walking, we get the wisdom of the Lord. Then we realize we have a short time here. And as we're taking all the steps we're taking, in the wisdom of God, we're redeeming the time. That's why the verse says, look at that verse again. Walk. How do you walk? Walk in wisdom. How? You know there are many people that surround you. Some of these people will tempt you. Some of these people will try to hinder you. Some of these people will try to discourage you. Some of these people will try to deceive you. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without. And then as you do that, before you can get to the destination where you are going, you will need to redeem the time. Redeem the time. When we talk about walking, what do we realize about walking? Do you realize that many of the songs we sing actually deal with walking? And if you sing all these songs and you really understand them, you will know what the Bible means by walking. We just finished singing now. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. That means that when we talk about Christian walking, we're talking about the Christian. Looking at the light of the word of God. The teaching of the word of God. And as he's taking step after step. Step after step. He is walking. He is living according to the dictates and the directives of the word of God. And it concludes everything by saying... When you are walking with the Lord, you trust and obey. Walking with the Lord then means obedience to the Lord. In another stanza, it says, 
Then in fellowship switch, we will sit at his feet, or we will walk by his side in the way when what he says we will do. What does that mean? It means when we talk about the believer's walk, walking with the Lord means what he says we will do. So as we're talking about tonight, walking, walking in wisdom and redeeming the time, what we're talking about, the steps of obedience, the steps of righteous living that we take one after the other as we move from here to there. Another song tells us, Thou art my everlasting portion. More than friend or life to me, all along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee. That again explains what walking means. When we talk about walking in the Christian life, we mean Christ has taken all these steps that pleased the Father. He walked in the path of righteousness. Savior, let me come to your side. Let me take the same steps you have been taking. Let me walk close with thee, close to thee, close to thee. All along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee. That's exactly what the Bible says. He that says he abideth in him, ought himself so to walk, even as he walked. When we talk of Christian walking, we're talking about the life we live. Another song says in a song, a book, are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? That means if we say we are walking, as tonight we're talking about Christian walk, and it says walk in wisdom, it means we're believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. We have then come to the side of the Lord and we are walking, taking the steps of obedience, the steps of life, the steps of righteousness and uprightness, walking with the Lord. Look at this again. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. What we're talking about here is Christian character, the lifestyle of the believer. And that that lifestyle of the believer should be shaped and controlled by the word of God and the wisdom of God. Our lives should be salt in the earth and light to the world, walking in wisdom toward them that are without. Christians live amidst people of other religions, people of many traditions, people of many ideas. And so our lives must be instructive to the vast multitudes of non-Christians around us. And as we constantly live our lives, we ought to be redeeming the time. That means buying up opportunities. Opportunity is the flower of time that blossoms now for the moment and then thereafter is gone forever. I pray that the Lord will open our eyes, that we'll see the great things he has preserved for us in this world we're studying tonight. As you can see already, there are three major points we're going to consider in this verse. Number one, Christian walk. Number two, Christian wisdom. Number three, spending time wisely. One, Christian walk. But our Christian walk should be done in Christian wisdom. And everything should be done while you spend the time you have here on earth, wisely. Let's look at them one by one. Number one, the Christian walk. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Already I've explained to you that our walk speaks of our life, our character, our conduct. You know, in walking, a person may be slow. A person may be fast. Sometimes if a person is slow in walking, he may not get to the place he's going at the appointed time. He may miss the bus, miss the train, miss the airplane. The Christian life is like that. 
if we walk too slowly or too sluggishly, we may discover that the Lord comes and we have not gotten ready. We may discover that opportunities come in the Christian fold. We are not ready for those opportunities. And so it is very important for us that we will walk fast enough so that we will be walking according to the directives of the Lord in our lives. Let me first of all talk about the unregenerate. The people that do not know God. The people that have not been born again. The Bible also talks about them. The Bible talks about them that they too, they are walking. Only that they are walking in the broad way. Only that the way in which the unbelieving people, the unregenerate people are walking, it will lead unto destruction and perdition. But they too, they are walking. We believers are walking in the narrow path. The narrow path that leads to heaven. And we should walk according to the way of the Lord. According to all that the Lord has written down. But first of all, let me talk about the walk of the unbeliever. The reason I want to look at this is that I want you to open up to the Spirit of God. And to be frank and open and sincere with yourself and the scriptures. If you see that the steps you are taking in life. If you see that the walk of your life is like the walk of the unbeliever, then you will know that tonight you ought to make a change so that you can walk as a true believer. How does the unbeliever walk? The Bible says the unbeliever walks contrary unto God. The unbeliever walks in darkness. The unbeliever walks in lasciviousness, lost and abominable idolatries. The unbelievers walk in pride. Unbelievers walk with a forward mouth. Unbelievers walk in a way that is not good, not good in the sight of God. Unbelievers walk with slanders. They walk in the imagination of their heart after other gods. They walk in lies. They walk after, their own, after the devices of their own hearts. Let's look at how the scripture says it. Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26. Verse 23. If ye will not be reformed by me, by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, who are these people that the Bible says they walk contrary unto God? Oh, very clearly here it says, those who have not been reformed. They were formed physically once, but they had not been reformed spiritually. They have not been transformed. They have not been renewed. They have not been changed. In the New Testament language, they have not been born again. These are the fleshly people, the carnal people, the unbelieving people. These are the sinners, the unregenerate. They walk contrary unto God. What does that mean? That means as God is leading, that we walk in a particular direction, they go the opposite way. The word of God says, in your pilgrimage on earth, you will not make any idol. You will not bow down to any idol. They walk contrary. They worship idol. The word of God says they will not jest with his name, joke with his name, swear with his name, or they will not call the name of the Lord in vain. They walk contrary. They are sinners. They do not know the Lord. They walk contrary. The word of God says that they should honor their parents and they should honor elderly people. They are rude, they are incorrigible, they have no respect for their earthly parents or spiritual parents or leadership in the church. They walk contrary. Doesn't the word of God say we should not steal? They will steal from their husbands at home. They will steal from their wives' passbook or from their wives' uh, wallet. Or they will steal from their parents or they will pick pockets on the, on the road or in the market or in the bus. They walk contrary. As the word of God says, we shouldn't commit adultery. We shouldn't mess up our lives with the opposite sex. They walk contrary. These are the sinners. 
These are the unregenerate. These are the people that have not been reformed, not transformed, not changed. And it says they walk contrary. Verse 40. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, contrary, you will see, that means that the unbelieving people, those who don't know the Lord, their life is marked in a negative way. They're always living in opposition to God, contrary to God, contrary to the truth, contrary to sound doctrine, contrary to the way of peace. The Bible says they are walking in darkness since First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. Verse 11. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The sinners walk in darkness. The light has come. They reject it. Jesus, the light of the world, has been introduced to them, they reject him. The light of the gospel that will show a man how to live, how to marry, how to walk in life, how to interact with other people, how to be gentle and kind. The gospel light has come that shows us how to be holy and pure. They reject the light of the gospel. They walk in darkness. That is the life of the unbeliever. And it said that these people are walking in lasciviousness. Look at First Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4, verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. You see the way the unbeliever walks? Lasciviousness, lost, excess of wine, nightclub, pub houses, cinema houses, pornography, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idol worship. That is the lifestyle of the unbeliever. And it says, they walk in pride, they walk in the imagination of their hearts. But are these some believers, the sinners, alone? Are there not some people who knew the Lord before, but then who have also started to walk contrary? The Bible calls them backsliders. There are people who knew the Lord before. And these people that knew the Lord before, they had a change of life. They were walking with the Lord when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. They had fellowship with God before. We sit with him in fellowship suite or we walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do. These are the people that in the past they were washed in the blood of the Lamb. Walking with the Savior. These were the people that their desire, their prayers in time past was close to thee, close to thee. Let me walk close to thee as my Savior. But then something happened. Temptation came their way. They yielded unto temptation. And now they live the way of the Lord. They now walk in the way, in the path of darkness. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 13. Who live the paths of uprightness, to walk in the ways of darkness. How do you understand that verse? When we say somebody leaves home, that means he has been at home before, but now he left. He went away from home. When we say a child left home, that means that that child has been living with the family before, but he left the parents. This one says, who leave the path of uprightness. Which means that these people that this verse is talking about, 
they were in the fold before. They were with the people of God before. They were walking in, the, in uprightness before, but they left. They became like the prodigal son. And after their backsliding, they walk in the ways of darkness, exactly like the unbelievers. That means that these people that are called backsliders by the word of God, they now too, they walk contrary. The whole church, believing the whole word of God, walking the same direction, going from earth to heaven. They now leave the congregation of the righteous. They walk contrary. You will notice it in their language. They talk contrary. You will notice it in their dressing. They dress contrary. You will notice it in their eating and drinking. They eat contrary. They drink contrary. You will see it in their marriage. They marry contrary to the teaching of the word of God. You will notice it in their friendship. The friendship they have now is contrary to the teaching of the word of God. You will see that these people are backsliders. That the path of uprightness, the way of righteousness that they were living in before, they are forsaken. Those are the backsliders. But now, let's talk about the believer, the Christian. How does a person who is still with the Lord... Who is still in the Lord? How does he walk? In Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. From verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life newness of life if you saw somebody yesterday when he came to the church or she came to the church and he dressed in old clothing and the clothing was not neat already there are some spots and tears in the clothing and you saw that individual very clearly then the person came to the study tonight wearing something different something new you can easily spot out the difference you say oh did you have this before and you may even go to the person and said i saw you yesterday and your clothes were old and torn and dirty but now you appear new everything appears totally different now and the person may say somebody gave it to me somebody bought it for me after the service yesterday and then i abandoned the old i put on the new when you see somebody who has been living the old life contrary to god talking contrary walking contrary behaving contrary dressing contrary drinking contrary going to places contrary to the word of god all of a sudden the person knew the Lord. A change has come. And now there is a newness of life. New talk. New dressing. New behavior. New conduct. New lifestyle. New relationship. New prayer life. Everything becomes new. Then you get near the person you say. It appears you have become reformed. Transformed. Renewed. You are no more walking contrary again. What happened to you? I became identified with Christ. I knew Jesus Christ. He came into my life. He changed my life. Even so now, we should walk in newness of life. What does it mean to walk in newness of life? Don't walk contrary anymore. Walk with God. Don't walk in darkness anymore. Walk in the light. Don't walk in lasciviousness, lust, and abominable idolatry anymore. Walk in godliness. Don't walk in pride anymore. Walk in humility. Don't walk with a forward mouth anymore. Walk with a soft, loving mouth, loving language, kind words in your tongue. Don't walk in the way that is not good anymore. Walk in the way of the Lord that is good. Don't walk with slanderers and slanders anymore, gossiping here and there. Walk in truth, in uprightness. Don't walk in the imagination of your heart anymore. Walk according to the teaching of scripture. Don't walk with other gods, after other gods anymore. Walk after the only true God. Don't walk in lies, walk in the truth. 
Don't walk after your own devices anymore. Walk according to the plan and pattern of the Lord. And do not walk in the ways of darkness like the backsliders do. Walk in the light. That's what it means. That now you are a new creature. All things are passed away. You walk in newness of life. The Bible describes it in very many ways. You know how the Bible describes it? It says, you walk humbly with thy God. That's what we learn about Enoch. He walked with God. That's what we learn about Noah. He walked with God. The Bible says, and Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord, and he was perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And it has been shown to you, O oh man, what the Lord requires from thee, that you will love the Lord your God, and you will walk humbly with thy God. That is the believer's walk. You see, the believer is known by his walk before God, and by his walk among his fellow men. We are called to walk humbly with God, to walk in the fear of God. Look at Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Verse 31. Then at the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord. Walking in the fear of the Lord. And in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. There are some people that don't study the Bible right. They say only in the Old Testament the people were told to fear God. But that in the New Testament, we are not supposed to fear God. But here the Bible says, the church, New Testament church, they were walking in the fear of God. Jesus said, I will show you whom you will fear. Fear God. Whom after destroying the body, can draw that body, drive that body in, into hellfire to suffer eternally. He said, I say unto you, Fear him. Uh, some people will say, that was before the cross. That was before Jesus paid the full price for our redemption. But after the cross and after the Holy Ghost came, the church is not supposed to fear God. You see their ignorance. You see Acts of the Apostles was after the cross. After the Holy Ghost descended upon the church. And it says in the verse 31, Acts chapter 9, Then the church is addressed. Throughout all Judea and Galilee and, and Samaria. And they were edified. Walking in the fear of the Lord. Walking in the fear of the Lord. How do we know somebody who fears God? Let me remind you of a young man that feared God. His name, Joseph. The wife of his master cast her eyes upon him. And the wife of the master invited him to commit immorality with her. And when there were no people around, she caught hold of this man's garment and said, You must live in immorality with me. And the man, young man said, How can I do this great evil sin, commit this great iniquity, and sin against my God? That's a fear of God. A person that fears God Walking in the fear of God will not commit sin. The pastor may not be there, you will not sin. Other Christian believers, members of the church may not be there, you're not going to give bribe. You're not going to use any kind of deception to get your way through in your place of work when you are the only believer there. In the corporation, in the market, in your family, you may be the only believer there. If you have the fear of God and you are walking in the fear of God, you will not do evil. The Christian, therefore, will walk in the fear of God. He will walk in the commandments of the Lord. Walking before God in truth, in righteousness, in uprightness of heart. The Bible, in describing the work of the believer, says the believer is to walk by faith. He doesn't walk in unbelief. He is to walk in the spirit. He will not walk in the flesh. He will not make provision for the flesh. You know what it means to make provision for the flesh? It is to get yourself in a way that your flesh can become inflamed. Your flesh can become so troubled, you can be tempted to evil. 
but you walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. That means if you find that in the boss, you are sitting in a particular place and that place is bringing temptation to your flesh, bringing immoral thoughts to your mind, bringing ungodly feeling to your body. You get out of that place, walk in the spirit, do not fulfill the laws of the flesh. If you find there is a particular picture in a newspaper, and if you set your eyes on that picture, it will bring wrong thoughts, wrong imagination, impure thought into your mind. You cancel that thing. You don't take that kind of paper. Walk in the spirit. Do not fulfill the laws of the flesh. You see that it shows on the television will corrupt your mind, will tempt your body, and will bring evil into your mind. You close it up. You have nothing to do with it. You see that some television shows or some cinema shows in the theater will bring immorality back to your heart, back to your family. You want to walk in the spirit, not to walk in the flesh. Or you see that some novels are flying around. And they say, read this novel. And you see that if you read it, if you bring immorality, if you bring temptation of the flesh to you, walk in the spirit, make no provision for the flesh. Or in the, in the neighborhood, the people are drinking, and you were a drunkard before you became born again. You know that if you stay around, that thing is going to tempt your flesh, and you are going to fall back into drinking again. Walk in the spirit, get out of that place. You will not make provision for the flesh. The Bible says the believer will walk in love, not in hatred, not in malice. There are some people that will say, I will not greet so and so. You are walking in malice. There are some people that will say, I don't like so-and-so's look. I don't like so-and-so's uh, appearance. You are walking in hatred. There are some people that will say, I dislike so-and-so. You are walking in hatred. That's not the way of the believer. Walk in love. Has somebody offended you? Walk in love. Has somebody criticized you? Walk in love. Has somebody injured you? Walk in love. As somebody misunderstood you and is taking your name all about gossiping against you, walk in love. Don't fight. Don't talk back. Don't say, I will do to him like he has done to me. Walk in love. Do you find that some people are avoiding you? Don't repay them in their coin. You walk in love. Then the Bible says, you walk righteously. You walk uprightly. You walk honestly. In your business, you see the business of the believer will be different from the business of the unbeliever. The unbelievers may cheat. The unbelievers may change the prices. The unbeliever may steal, but the believer must do his business honestly. You put a price there, you don't swear in the market, you don't swear when you are selling something. You see the unbelieving people, they will, they will swear to confirm a lie. They will say, God knows this is the amount I, I bought this in. And the amount I'm selling to you, I'm not making any gain at all. If you're a believer, talk honestly. And walk honestly. In the midst of the children of God, let us be honest. Sometimes a young man will go to a young lady in the church and will say, I dreamt he didn't dream. God spoke to me, God did not speak to him. God has been telling me for a long time, but I didn't want to tell you it's a lie. I've been rejecting it for a long time, but because I could not hold it anymore, well, God says I should just come and tell you, you pray about it. I've been struggling with this for a long time. It is not so. God told me your name in the dream. It is not so. One of the ushers told him your name. He, he went and said, what's the name of that sister? And they told him. Then he came to him and said, God told me in the dream, walk honestly. Don't be dishonest because of marriage. Because of wanting to have your own way, don't be dishonest. Walk honestly. Walk in the law of God. Walk in the ways of the Lord. You know what the Bible says? It says the person that is a real child of God, he will walk with a perfect heart. Let's look at Psalm 101. Psalm 101 verse 6. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. 
a child of God, you want to serve the Lord, worship the Lord, he that walketh in a perfect way, let there be a perfect, upright walk. That's what the Lord desires. Psalm 119, verse 1 and verse 3. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Verse 3. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You see, that is how to live, how to walk like a believer. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 17. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 17. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that henceforth ye should ye henceforth walk, not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Don't walk like the Gentiles. Don't behave like the Gentiles who don't have God. They walk in the vanity of their mind, that ye henceforth no more walk like that. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15. See then, that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. A person who is always thinking about heaven, that's wise. A person who is saying, if I do this sin, how will it affect my relationship with God, that's wise. A person that is saying, if I take this road, will it still lead me to the eternal destination fellowship with God, that's wise. A person that is taking a decision, saying, what will Christ do? How will Christ walk? How will Christ talk? How will Christ behave? What will Christ do in this situation? And will make sure that he finds out what Christ will do, and he will do the same. That's a person that is walking circumspectly. Not as fools, but is walking as the wise. Let's go to Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Walk in wisdom. Towards them that are without. We've been talking about Christian walk. Now let us talk about Christian wisdom. Christian wisdom. You see, there is Christian wisdom. There is also worldly wisdom. The wisdom of the world is the wisdom of the salesman. A salesman will be bragging, will be telling you, will be telling you that this thing is very good. It is the best quality from the market. In fact, you can never get another quality like this at this price. It will deceive you and make you happy on deception. That is the wisdom of the world. That's not the wisdom we are talking about here. The wisdom of the world is diplomacy and deception. There are some people that will be very, very diplomatic. In their hearts, they may have hatred, but they train themselves to smile at you. That's not the wisdom we're talking about here. It is not the wisdom of elders, elders in the village. You know the elders in the village? The elders in the village, they have their ways of doing things. A father, for example, a man, may be having women outside, and it is unknown to the wives, to the wife inside, and he will so appear to be loving the wife, appear to be taking care of the wife, appear to be very faithful to the wife, and because of the traditional kind of uh, life, because of the village kind of wisdom, he knows how to hide all the other women away from this woman. That's not the wisdom, wisdom we are talking about. It is not the wisdom of the politician. The politician that will promise you this, and promise you this, and promise you that, and it is all a lie. He doesn't have any intention of doing it. That's not the wisdom we are talking about. We are talking of the wisdom of God. What kind of wisdom is this? Let's look at Job chapter 28. Job chapter 28, verse 28. Unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. The people of the world will tell you that if you don't take bribe, you are not wise. The Bible tells you when you fear the Lord and you don't take bribe, when you fear the Lord and you are not involved in corruption, that is wisdom. The people of the world will tell you if you want to get married, 
and you don't have relationship with that woman to know whether the woman can get pregnant or not, and you just go into a marriage like that blindly, they will tell you you are not wise. The Bible says, when you fear the Lord, and you keep bed undefiled, and you do not have any canon knowledge of that woman before you get married because you fear the Lord, that is wisdom. The people of the world will tell you that if somebody hates you and is throwing stone at your house and is trying to destroy you, destroy your business, trying to take your position, if you also don't try to petition against him and tell some lies against him so that before he catches you, you catch him and you displace him, they will tell you if you don't fight back and get your way through, you are not wise. The Bible says when you fear the Lord and you say promotion comes not from west, not from east, it comes from the Lord. In the fear of the Lord, you love your enemy. You pray for them that are persecuting you and the people that are despitefully, used, despitefully using you. You do good unto them. That is when you are wise. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. To depart from evil, that is understanding. Psalm 111. Psalm 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What do you think about the people that do not know the Lord? They do not fear the Lord. And they have a lot of diplomacy. They flatter. And it, they can get their way through. They have the natural wisdom of a woman. Female wisdom. That will know how to smile, how to kneel down, how to talk, how to make her way through and get all the things she wants to get away from you. And they don't know the Lord. That's not the wisdom of God. That's not the wisdom of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning. The beginning. If you do not have the fear of the Lord, if you are not born again, if the word of the Lord is not controlling your life, controlling your tongue, controlling all your intentions and imaginations, you don't even, even have the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all day that do his commandment, his praise endureth forever. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Deuteronomy chapter 4, from verse 5. Behold, I have taught you the statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom. You have learnt about repentance. Repent early before it is too late. This is your wisdom. You have learnt about restitution. I have taught you the judgments and the statutes of the Lord. Keep therefore and do them. So you can have a conscience void offense toward God and toward man. This is your wisdom. You have heard about marriage. One man, one wife. Keep to the word of God. Too many wives, too much trouble. Too many wives, the women will be tearing you apart. If you read the people that were polygamists in the Bible, you will see the lot of trouble that they went through. It is difficult to keep two women. You cannot have the grace to keep two women. It is contrary to the word of God. And your life will be a mystery. Your wisdom is to stay with that one woman. Your wisdom is to stay with that one husband. So that you will not be running from pillar to post. Trying to satisfy that woman. Satisfy that woman. Keep to one wife. This is your wisdom. And you see when you are following the word of God. You are following the teaching of the word of God. That is wisdom. In James chapter 3, reading from verse 14. But ye have be, if ye have bitter envy and strive in your heart, glory not, lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. What kind of wisdom do we need? Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. If a person is living in immorality, 
And he says, I can talk any lady into immorality. I have the wisdom. That wisdom is not from God. The wisdom that is from above is first pure. If a lady is going about in the fellowship bragging, I don't have to work. All these men in the fellowship that are working, I can get money from anybody, no matter who the person is. I know how to talk my way through. I have the wisdom. I can get money out of anyone. That's not wisdom from above. The wisdom from above is first pure. If two people, if somebody offends me, even if I am the one that is wrong, if the leaders in the church call us, I have the wisdom to turn everything and tell my story until even the innocent person will become guilty. And the leaders in the church will say, I should go. And they will punish the innocent person because I have the wisdom to tell my story. That's not the wisdom of God. That's coming from the devil. The wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. That's the wisdom of God. Now let's go back to Colossians and look at something. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Them that are without. What does that mean? It means those that are outside grace. Outside the kingdom of God. Outside Christ. They are not born again. They are outside. Make sure that you have the wisdom of God upon your life as you interact with them. Who are these people? How can we know them? This is where many people have made serious mistake. If your wife is not born again, your wife is not in the kingdom of God, your wife is not in the grace of God, she is one of them that are without. You should not just behave any way to her. You should be very, very careful. Behave in wisdom, the wisdom of God, in the fear of God, in purity and faithfulness. Don't say, after all, she is not born again. That is the more reason you have to behave in a very careful, honest, pure, faithful manner. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without, outside the kingdom of God. Your husband may not be born again. Your husband does not know Jesus. And many times some, some women will behave anyhow to the husband. They will say, after all, he should understand. If your husband is not in the kingdom of God, be very careful. The way you talk. Let him see the wisdom of God in your language. Let him see faithfulness in your life. Let him see upright work, righteous work spiritual work, uncompromising work. Let him see a kind of work, a kind of lifestyle that will challenge him and bring him from outside the kingdom and bring him to the kingdom of God. It may be that your children are growing up and they are not born again yet, but they are watching everything you are doing. Your children then, if they are not born again, they are them that are without. Don't just say anything to them. Don't gossip between daddy and mommy while the children are there. And don't gossip when they are not there. Don't do anything that the children will say, eh, daddy wants us to be born again. Look at what daddy is doing. Daddy tells us not to tell lies. Look at what daddy said to that worker in the church. Daddy said that we should not be covetous. Look at what daddy is saying about other people in his place of work, envying them because of what they have. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without in the market, there may be unbelievers that are selling around you. These some believers will say anything, but they are watching you. They are watching whether you will compromise. They are watching whether you will go in the evil way with them. And they will say, there you are, there you are. We are all the same. We are all the same. Whether that church or this church, whether church up there or church down there, we are all the same. They are watching you. Walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom. You know, David... He was in the house of Saul. And people were watching him. And Saul hated him. And Saul spoke against him. And Saul was looking for him to destroy him. 
the Bible says something. It said, but David behaved himself wisely in the sight of all Israel. That's what to do. You be a believer and behave wisely in the sight of all the people that are watching you. It says, walk in wisdom towards them that are without. It means that you will live a noble life, a godly life. Because you see, the noble godly life is the most convincing of all sermons. And you can never win outsiders to the Lord by compromising with them in sin. You walk closest to Christ, and then you will have the most convincing, convicting, converting power. That means to walk in wisdom, you will walk faithfully. Do your duty in your place of work. That's wisdom. In your business, be scrupulously honest. Honest to detail. Honest to the letter. Somebody gave you a wrong change, you tell them immediately, you are giving more money than you ought to give me. That's walking in wisdom towards them that are without. Let there be no rudeness, no irritability, no vulgar language, bad language, immoral language, and no selfishness. Love them without compromising with sin. Be true and faithful. Be humble and kind. Be holy. Be pure. That means you are walking wisely. We come to the last point. Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. This is very important for the believer. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without. Redeeming the time. Our time is so very essential and very important that we have to redeem time. That means we have to spend time wisely. Psalm 90. Psalm 90, reading from verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days, that's redeeming the time, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom, that is walking in wisdom. Isn't that another way of rewriting Colossians chapter 4 verse 5? Teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Walk in wisdom, redeeming the time. If you look at the title on the top of this psalm, it says, A psalm of Moses, the man of God. Why do we point your attention to this? Look at verse 10. The days of our years are three score and ten. And if by any strength they be four score, eighty years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and will fly away. Already, Moses was more than 80 years of age. And he knew that the average lifespan should be either 70 years or 80 years. And Moses realized, he said, I'm living on borrowed time. I've exhausted all my 80 years. And yet, in the grace of God, in the love of God, he still called me. Even though I've gone beyond 80 years, he still called me. All the time I have now, it is borrowed time. Oh, Lord. Teach me to number my days so that I can apply my heart unto wisdom. The same thing we ought to realize, that life is short. Time is short. And we may not know how short it is. The wheels of nature are not made to roll backward. Everything presses on toward eternity. From the birth of time, an impetuous current has set in which bears all the sons of men towards an interminable ocean. Now what I'm saying is this. It's like, look at it this way. There is an ocean in front of you. That ocean is deep without bottom. That ocean is wide without end at its shore. And there is a wind that is driving you, driving you, driving you in the direction of that bottomless and a shoreless ocean. Take your time. Eternity is ahead of you. And time is pressing you on, leading you on unto that eternity. Time and tide wait for no man. The little time we have on hand is all we have. And even this short space is hurrying on so fast that to catch it is like dipping your hand in a running stream which glides through the fingers that would detain it. If you try to put your hand inside water, 
and you try to hold the stream that is flying or moving by your hand. As you are trying to hold that water, the water passes by. That is time. You cannot hold time. It will not wait for you. For many people, large portions of time are lost. The season of boyhood was wasted in indolence. The season of youth has been dissipated. The season of riper years older age is also being lost in the pursuit of shadows. Others lose time, much time, in delaying, procrastination, and expecting what will never come. They are staying idle. They say, what are you waiting for? They are waiting for the bus that will never arrive. And the place is over there. If they had walked, in a few minutes, they would have got there. In life, many people are waiting for some opportunities that never come. Instead of rising up, spending your time wisely, moving on, and doing the right thing at the right time. Redeem your time. How do you do that? You will do that by treasuring up scraps of time. You rise early. You spend your time profitably during the day. You are young. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Uh, you have not been born again. Seek the Lord while he may be found. You need to be saved. This is the accepted time. You need a spiritual quality in your life. Never delay. Never push it forward. This is the accepted time. You have not started working for the Lord. Go work in my vineyard today. Time is short. We have not a moment to waste. Redeem the time for the purpose of preparing for eternity. Let's look at Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12 from verse 54. And he said also unto the people, When ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, there cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that ye do not discern this time? What did Jesus mean? Jesus said, the Messiah is here. How is it? You don't discern this time of opportunity. The one who can forgive your sin without having to go and slaughter animal, going to the synagogue, going to the Pharisees, going to the high priest, the one to forgive you instantaneously is here right now. You are not making use of the opportunity. How is it he cannot discern this time? The one who can make you holy and sanctify you, and purify you, and give to you the very nature of God is here, and you can have it now for the asking. How is it you do not discern the time? The one who can carry you like a sheep on his shoulder, and take you to the bosom of the Father, and he is here, and he can do it right now, but you don't know. How is it ye are not discerning the time? Make sure that you rescue time from being wasted. And you redeem the time for the purpose of preparing for eternity. You know, the Bible says the time is short. Let's look at it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. What does that mean? It says, if you have not been born again, don't say, my wife will not agree with my being born again. My wife does not like Jesus Christ. My wife will not accept salvation by grace and by faith. My wife is the one hindering me. Uh, the time is short. It remained that both they that have wives be as though they had none. Go ahead and repent and don't think about your wife. Or somebody saying, I would have repented. I like coming to a church like this. I like studying the word of God. But you see, my husband will not allow. He says, time is short. Death is near. The end of time is near. We don't know when the trumpet will sound. Forget about that man and love God more than man. Give your life to the Lord and leave the result in the hand of God. The time is short and it is uncertain. A man may regain lost health. A man may regain lost wealth. But you can never regain lost time. We can only ascertain how much time we have expended. We don't know how much time remains. Do you remember the parable of the rich fool? He talked of many years. He said, my soul, 
take thine ease and rest be merry because you have enough goods stored up for many years he was talking of many years god did not even talk of a single day he said this night thinking that many years still remain what remained for him was not even up to a single day do you know how much time remains before the trumpet will sound do you know how much time remains before you are called away from this world be wise lord teach us to number our days have a plan for the use of your time let us learn to be more faithful in the use of the present why because the destiny of eternity depends upon what we do in this short time the destiny of eternity depends on the way we spend this short time in romans chapter 13 romans chapter 13 verse 11 and knowing and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation final salvation the coming of the lord nearer than when we believed the night is fast spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us walk honestly let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer are you walking in humility of heart are you walking uprightly are you walking righteously are you walking according to the law of the lord are you walking in the fear of god are you walking even as christ walked or are you walking contrary are you walking in pride are you walking in abominable idolatry are you walking in darkness are you walking according to gospel truth according to gospel light are you wise are you wise are you walking in wisdom towards them that are without are you pure before the unbelievers that's wisdom walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time 